This is the companion video for chapter four, Advanced Ambience. In this video, we're gonna talk a little bit more about making more advanced sound cues, specifically for having much better sounding loops. Then we will talk a little bit about um, using blueprints to switch ambient sounds so that if you have one overall ambient sound for your area and you walk through a doorway, it switches to another ambient sound. Then we will talk about triggering sounds with keyboard input. And then after that, I will go through and talk a little bit about the map associated with this and what you're supposed to do in it for your project. So let's begin. Um, I am working in the AV3, um, I think this is, the AV3 environment. And um, this is just going to be sort of like an interior and exterior. But primarily for now, I am just going to, you know, as I build some cues, I'm just going to stay on the inside. But um, the first kind of sound I do kind of want to work with, well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll go outside since most of my, my stuff is out here, is there is a waterfall back here. You know, it's kind of a big level, but um, it's going to give you the opportunity to really work on setting up some nice soundscapes to the environment given. So back here we have some water and it would be nice to have like a nice sort of waterfall sound coming from here. But as you saw kind of last time, um, when we just have like a singular sound, even if you try your best to make it sound looping, um, it still might have some blips in it where you can kind of tell where the, where the waves stopped and started again. So one of the things that we can do to kind of fix that is to, you know, have, have two different water sounds and create an asynchronous loop with that. So I'm going to just create a new sound cue in here and I am going to call this waterfall and I'm going to create a nice sounding asynchronous loop with the, um, these two water things. So I'm going to go in here and let me get this open so you can see it a little bit better. Let me zoom it out a little bit. And let me put in, I'm so bad with, <laughs> I can never remember which program I'm in, program I'm in with those uh, controls. I work in so many different ones. Let me get these two waters in there. And the key to asynchronous loops is that they have to be different length loops. So I believe this one I made is around three seconds. And this one I made is around five seconds. And you want to, you know, the asynchronous, they don't start looping at the same time, like when they, when they go again. That's kind of like the whole point of them. And it's just a very simple way um, to do this. So let's see. Uh, what we want to use with this is we kind of want them to play over at the same time. So we're going to use a mixer node and we want to make sure that we do our looping node too. And I'm just going to hook these two up and throw this in the output. And as we, we can kind of, well, actually let's take one off. We'll delete, we'll delete one of these and just listen to it first, um, just by itself. And we can hear that little blip and that just kind of happens sometimes. Um, so when we hook in the second one and I was kind of cheap and it is literally from the same longer wave file, I just took a little piece from the beginning, a little piece from the end, but made sure that they were different lengths so they sound a little bit different. So if we play this cue now, The blip is a little bit less noticeable um, in there. And if we were to like layer this with some other sounds, it would be even, you know, like maybe some dripping water, maybe some other wind sounds, maybe some other stuff. It would be even less noticeable. So when we talk about an asynchronous loop, all we mean is two loops, um, two wave files or more. You could, we could do multiple wave files in here 
like you can you know asynchronize a bunch of them um, and you just mix them together so that as they go through you know one will play for three three seconds and then loop again one will play for five seconds so that it's you know not quite as a noticeable jump it also kind of gives a little bit better of a um, a little bit better of a mixture because you know if they're asynchronous you're not always hearing the same like repeated stuff again so we'll save this and let's make sure that we place this in our world we are placing our waterfall and we want to put it here so you might think that um, what you want to do with this would be to make it spatialized and honestly probably for like really large sounds like this we might not necessarily want it spatialized because if you've ever been to a place with a waterfall like if you've ever been to Niagara Falls you just kind of get enveloped in water sounds so even though we do want to attenuate this we might want to turn off spatialization because it might just kind of sound weird um, that one ear hears it and another ear doesn't like if you're looking around but the attenuation is important um, the inner radius would be where it's the loudest which would be really close to the waterfall Swing this in but we're probably going to hear this from a pretty good distance away like you know if we're standing on the edge we'd, we'd probably hear it um, this rock barrier is probably a good barrier actually for where we kind of just begin to start hearing it so this would probably be pretty accurate and if we start kind of flying through this let me turn on this so that we're here we might even want to make it even bigger because we'll start coming through and we'll hear it ever so slightly kind of giving the player like you know like oh what's up ahead something sounds kind of interesting and different and then as you approach it it gets louder until you're right on it and it's at its loudest point so you know as you're placing around your sounds be kind of conscious about you know how big is this object that's playing the sound like waterfalls are pretty big their sound carries pretty far if you're doing something though like um, what we're going to do next with birds in the trees you know you probably wouldn't hear like if we put a bird in this tree you probably wouldn't hear it over there so you would want it to be smaller um, if you do like a wind or you know it's raining out here you probably would hear it consistently through the whole level so you would have a giant you know one like you wouldn't want to get softer the over here so you might most likely would have your inner radius take up pretty much most of that level okay so next let's talk a little bit about doing some random sounds and I believe I touched on this last week a little bit but we are going to kind of work with them again and um, what we're what I'm going to demo with this is making some random bird sounds notice I do have four I could easily have done a bunch more like and these aren't very long and you'll see that when I put them in the um, sound cue but the nice thing about this is um, we can get some real good random birdiness with this so let's make a new sound cue I'm gonna call it birds and I'm gonna open this and let me put all of them in there and these are real quick sounds and let's see if we kind of play all of them let me zoom out and position this a little bit better bird one bird two bird three and bird four so like if you just want to set this up real simple and you know keep in mind this is going to sound really bad and I kind of want to make it sound really bad so you know what not to do um, we can just throw in this random 
and then throw in that loop afterwards because we do want it to you know keep playing. So um, we do have four inputs, so we do need to add two to those, and we'll just feed this through. We'll feed that output into the looping, and then we'll play this whole cue. And this sounds, like I said, it sounds pretty bad. And this is not, let me turn this off. Um, that's not what birds sound like. Um, we don't want to sound like we're being attacked by a bunch of birds. We want it to sound like we're just outside on a pleasant day and the birds are out there chirping. So this is where using sound cues can get pretty, you know, pretty deep as far as um, how, you know, how much you can mess with this. And you can have some gigantic looking sound cues and that's perfectly fine because, you know, we really want to up that variation. In fact, let's see, let me find the right one I want. Not that one. Maybe this bird too. So if we play that node, it's like this real quick kind of like squawk. And what if the bird really didn't kind of sound like this? Maybe it squawks a couple times when it does its call. What we could do is we could actually feed this, you know, single one into a different node before it goes into that random. Like maybe we want this bird to sound to play three times. So we could actually first feed this into a concatenator. Let's do it this way. One, two, three times and then put that into the output. And let's play our whole, we'll, we'll, play, we'll play this node first. Maybe that's more of like the kind of sound you wanna go for. So if we play the whole cue, still kind of obnoxious, but you know, we're, we're getting there, we're getting there. Um, Probably, you know, the last thing we're probably going to want to do is put some delays on things. Maybe each bird has its own kind of delay. You know, before we put that delay, you know, over here, maybe each one has its own sort of delay on it. So, like, maybe this bird sound might play every one to three seconds. Maybe we only want this crazy bird sound to play every three to five seconds. And then maybe this bird sound, oops, sorry. Let's do our delay. Which one is this one? plays every, I don't know, two to four seconds. And this one plays, which one is this one? This one's kind of unique. So maybe we want to really push this one out pretty far. So maybe like five to seven seconds. So I'll play this Q. And this is where, you know, it's gonna get really long And this can work in some situations. And the only downside of using the random node is that um, it is only going to play one sound at a time. But one of the benefits is we could also give weight to things. So right now we have everything is weighted the same. And, you know, we kind of. Um, we're kind of delaying some stuff so it does kind of you know even if we get like this one long delay it's going to wait that whole entire time play it but then it's going to it could randomly choose it again wait that whole long time and play it so one of the other things we could do would be to change the weight so that maybe this last sound um, is chosen less or maybe you know this other sound is chosen more but again one of the downsides is that 
we're only getting one sound at a time. So what we could do is we could take this whole, you know, actually, no, let's do it this way. You know, rather than just a random, what if we add a mixer on the other end? Sorry if that jumped for a second. Um, oh, as I was saying, let's, what happens if we add a mixer into the mix so that we feed this random into one? I'll put this into our output. I'm then going to highlight this whole like bird node and control C and control V to paste in another bird node and then put that into another spot in the mixer so that, and you know, this is where you, you kind of might want to make sure that you're keeping your sound cues really well organized because, you know, things can get crazy pretty, pretty quick as far as this stuff goes. So, you know, kind of keeping it organized and compact can help out a lot. You know, obviously I don't want to spend too much time doing this, but on the video, but you know, that's a little bit easier than this craziness down here. But for the sake of time, I don't want to do that. But let's play this new one where we're mixing. Cause remember mixing, it means, you know, same as the asynchronous loops. It's playing potentially both at the same time, but since these have delays on them, you know, they're not necessarily going to, you know, you know, but we can have it much more overlapping. You know, again, these delays are pretty long, so it, is, it does take a little bit to play this um, cue and, and hear what's going on, but let's try this. And as you saw, we got that one sound going, you know, at the same time. It does start to sound a little bit more realistic with this. And if we needed to, you know, even though this is a copy paste, you could make some adjustments to this stuff, um, like change your delays, change your concatenation. So we can really get pretty deep with this. The other thing I do want to show you with this that can help, um, I think I talked about this one last week, would be that... Um, the modulator yeah the modulator you could add in a modulator either on individual bird waves or just coming out of the random um, just coming out of here because you know you might want to have different settings for that but for the sake of time I'm just gonna throw it off the random on both of these and this will add even more variety to this. So we can change the pitch and the volume. So let's do kind of extreme because just to make sure that it is working right. So I'll do 0.3 and 3. Um, we can even change the volume. And sometimes it is good to change that volume just so you get, again, variation into it. That's what we're, that's what we're kind of shooting for. Realistic variation, but variation nonetheless. So let's do that into here. 0.3, one point, we'll do three, we'll do five. 0.75 to 1.25, and let's play it again. And that modulator is really kind of helping to push some differences. You know, I went a little bit extreme. Oh, it sounded kind of cute. But this is just another way that we can add variation. Okay, so I'm going to be done with this node. So I'm going to, you know, stop this and save it. And let's start placing it around our world. So I kind of want to put them in the trees. You know, one, one and done not really going to work because, you know, one, some birds over here, some birds over there. 
Um, this one we probably might actually want to put some uh, spatialization in just because we can place multiple ones around. You know, if you're just trying to get an overall birdness without a necessary direction, we wouldn't put spatialization around. But for for this level, it's not like there's going to be like a bunch of birds everywhere. They're going to be in very specific spots. So we want to make sure that we do some spatialization. Um, it should be turned on, I think, automatically. Yep. And we will kind of adjust the sphere a little bit. So it's going to be loudest if you're in the tree. But the fall off distance is way too big. Maybe something like that so that as you approach the tree you hear the birds but you know we don't want to just keep it in just that one let's I'm just um, control C control V this and I'm going to just kind of place maybe one over here and then another one in this tree and this is where you're going to kind of get it sounding like there's a lot of birds around you not like being attacked by birds, but it's coming from multiple directions. So let's turn on our sounds. Actually, let me make some of these fall offs a little bit bigger. Get some overlapping. And if you ever lose your sounds in these, you know, first of all, it'd be a good idea to make um, a folder to just hold all of your sound stuff. I should be doing that. I'm being really bad with this. Let's close that up. Close up some of the stuff. Um, you could always just sort this by type. And the good news is ambient sound starts with an A, so they always usually pop to the top. So let's see, birds one, let's make the birds two bigger. So we can kind of hear that around a little bigger. And we'll make birds bigger too. So a not a, we should have a, a bunch of nice spatialized overlapping bird sounds. So if we stand, I think, like right here, it should come from multiple directions. Let's try. So we have our water. And we could determine that um, it's still a little bit too much. We could go in and cu cut it down. Something else you could also consider would be to try to make sound cues based on bird type. So maybe bird one has a specific type of sound cue that you're working with. Bird two has a different, you know, where you're doing stuff with just that specific sound, but you're throwing them through stuff. This is a very lively scene. But um, again, once you place it, you might need to go back and make some alterations. Maybe with like the delays and stuff like that. So that um, it's not too much. Or maybe you just put it in, you decide some of the um, modulation is too much. You can go back and take those down. Maybe, you know, there's lots of stuff that you should probably go back and fix once you get it into world and actually listen to it. All right, let's turn that sound off. Okay. What is next? So we talked about random. Um, I do want to kind of touch on that concatenator again, and um, probably the random too, because the concatenator is a really handy way to make longer waves with little bits and pieces. So for instance, we have this radio here, and I want to have it so that um, eventually when you code this, it's going to, you know, trigger so that it'll randomly play a song. But I want it to sound like a real radio, like you're kind of tuning it in. So I have a static sound and then two different song sounds. But um, I don't want to have to, you know, go into my audio editor and attach those sounds together. Um, one will make them longer. And I'll just take up space. Why, why should I have to do that when I can just get one static and stitch them together in Unreal? So let me make a new sound cue called radio. 
And let me bring in those sounds. Song one, song two, and static. So what we want to have happen is we want this static sound to play and then a song or you know static sound in song two. And it should be randomly chosen when um, we play the radio because we don't, you know, we're kind of tuning around. You know, it's gonna, it's not super random because we only have two, but if you had like five of them, you would definitely see the randomness. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop in concatenator. I'm gonna kind of put this out here because I need it in both. And I'm gonna first play static. And then it'll, after that, play the song. So if we take a listen, that we hear the static, we hear the song. We then need to do the same thing for song two. So I'm gonna use another concatenator so that it'll play static and then song two. And if we listen to this one, we get a different sound. But you know, we didn't have to go in and edit stuff. So ultimately, our file size for all our sounds in our game will be smaller since we're kind of recycling that same sound. We would then want to drop on our random node so it'll randomly choose this one or that one. And we don't want to do looping. The reason is in the game, we want it to um, be triggered play once and be done. We don't want the radio to play on forever. We don't want it to keep like switching between different ones. So we're only going to do it once. So now if we play the whole cue, we'll get the first one. We'll have to play it again. Yeah, you know, we get not super random since um, there's only two. It doesn't sound like it's random, but trust me, it is. And again, um, you can change the weight of that randomness. So if you want one to play more than the other, we can set that up. But um, that's the concatenator. Super handy. And next, let's talk a little bit about blueprinting. So the first thing we're going to talk about with blueprinting is how to set up ambient sound switching when you um, go from one room to another. And this is a very simple way to do this. You know, obviously there are some downsides to approaching it this way, but it's just a really easy way to handle switching, you know, for instance, from exterior to interior sounds. So I do need to, to um, use a, you know, I need to add an extra um, sound cue to this that I'm not going to go over. So the video is going to jump for a second as I add that extra sound cue in. So what I created was a very simple interior um, sound effect. It just sounds like I'm um, like an AC running. So if we just listen to the cue real quick, it's very subtle. But, you know, sometimes sounds just need to be subtle. We don't want dead silence, but um, it's good enough for this interior space right here. So what needs to happen is your player starts in here and we want to play this interior sound. But, you know, if we try to fit this like really well into here, it's going to run into problems with... Um, you know, shooting out the outside of it, potentially. Same thing with out here. If we want, and I'm just gonna recycle this waterfall sound even though there's technically no waterfall sound. What if this was meant to be sort of like a rain sound and we want it over the entire space. So we set this up with our, um, let's see. You know, we start setting up our size I'll just, you know, I'll just keep it as a sphere, but it's supposed to just sound the same for the whole level. We start doing this, so when we hit play, we're going to hear it inside of here. And then if we go outside, we might hear our exterior, our interior in the exterior. 
So we're just going to practice a little bit of blueprinting with these two sounds so that when we walk through the door, it, it changes one to the other. So, you know, first things first, let's place our exterior sound out. Since it is supposed to be an all encompassing sound, I'm going to take spatialization off. And the other thing I want to make sure I do with this, since we don't want this playing when the game first starts, we only want it to start playing when we walk through that door is we want to make sure we scroll all the way down and turn off, um, where is it? Underneath activation, auto activate. This needs to be turned off which means it will not play when the game starts. With our interior one though, where did I put that? I think I put the wrong one in there. Let me put the interior cue in there. Um, we do want this to start when the game starts and we also want to make sure that it is big, big enough. So let's turn on our override attenuation, but we want to make sure that spatialization gets turned off because when you're in a room with air conditioning sounds, um, you know, it doesn't sound like it's coming from one specific spot. It's just kind of all enveloping and we want to make sure that fall off is the size of the room. So if, if we listen real quickly, we hear that. Let me see if I can up that point a little bit. Let's see, we hear that, but we also hear, I guess we only hear that because we turn on, let me, let me turn on um, the waterfall real quick. So we would, if we hadn't turned it off, we hear both at the same time, but you know, make sure you turn it off. But you know, even when we exit out the room, we'd still hear it, but this doesn't, this is off. We need to turn it on. So we're just going to use some blueprinting to do that. So make sure that before you get started just like everything else with sounds at least in for what we're doing you need to place those sound cues in your environment and if you want to read rename them um so they're easier to find but again you can just sort by type they should pop in at the top so what we need to do first is it's kind of like what we did last time with with our um triggers so what we need to do first, hold on, sorry, is we need to set up our um, box trigger. And we want to do that in the doorway. So let me locate that. That's underneath basics box trigger. I'm going to drop it in. I probably want to rename this because we might end up having multiple trigger boxes. Well, we will have multiple trigger boxes in this level. So we'll call this like door trigger or something like that so that we know um, we can find it a little bit easier. Let's make this bigger. Not too wide. We don't want to accidentally trigger it before we exit, exit it. There we go. And we have our trigger box, we have our two sounds. We can now jump into the level blueprint. And um, as a reminder, we're working in level blueprints. I know there's other ways to do blueprints, but stick with level blueprints. It's gonna make um, it a lot easier to grade these, to troubleshoot these. If you want to do it in a different way, in a different type of blueprint, in other your own personal projects, that's fine. But for our class, it does need to be in the level blueprint. So let me open up that level blueprint. And let me make, um, oops, don't delete this in this. That's what we need. Um, there's some um, particle effects. So don't mess with that. So we're going to just move over here and leave that alone. And let's just make all of our connections in there. So I'm going to select the door trigger. I'm going to come in here, right click, um, add event for door trigger. It's a collision event. It's going to be on actor begin overlap. And we also need to get our sounds in here. So let me locate my sounds and I'm just going to do that up here. Let's see our interior cue. 
I have that selected. Oops, sorry about that. I'm going to come in here and let's put this one here. I might need to move these, but we'll just create a reference to interior queue. And let me get my exterior one too. So I called that's waterfall two. So we will create a reference to waterfall two. So what we want to have happen is when we run into that trigger, we want to turn off interior and turn on waterfall two. If we were to run into it again, we would want to turn off waterfall two and turn on, you know, this one. So you know, if you're walking out the door, it does this. If you're walking in the door, it does that. So the node that we want to use is we want to use a flip-flop node. So let's pull it out and find it. It's called flip-flop. So if we start typing, I can, let's see. There it is right there. And the way that this works is um, it will do one and then do the other. So we're going to first do, you know, A, and then if we hit it again, it's going to do B. So what happens when we trigger it the first time? The first thing we want to have happen is we want to fade out our interior queue. We want that sound to fade out. So there is actually a node called fade out. Imagine that. Let's see if I can find it. Let's turn off this. Yeah, sometimes you might need to turn off context sensitive. And we have fade out. And we want to fade out our interior queue. And we can even give it a duration and, you know, a, you know, fade to what. Um, but after that, we want to fade in the waterfall too. So there is a node called fade in. Again, you might have to turn off context sensitive. And we'll feed this into the target. So if we connect it up, we want it to fade that one out. You know, first time through, fade out this sound. Fade in this sound. Next, we would want to, um, if we hit it again, we want to do the opposite. So we will need to just do a fade in of, we'll put B into here, fade in the interior queue, and fade out that exterior queue. And we should be good to go. Let's compile this. And let's, I'm going to keep this to the side because I like to watch these go through as I play them. Because again, this isn't going to work until, you know, until we actually play this. In, let me see if I can do this a little better. Um, we'll stretch that over. I don't really need, I guess I can move this. Put this over here. I almost have it. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so let's play this. We have our interior sounds. We don't hear the exterior. And then we trigger that exterior sound. We go through, we get our interior sound. Obviously, it shouldn't be that big of a switch. Like we need to probably change that fade in and fade out. Um, like we want it to fade out probably, a, you know, let's say duration of like 0.5 seconds for these. This might sound a little bit better. But, you know, it's good to, to test it first to make sure that it is working 
And let's try it again. And that was a little bit more natural. I do know there are some downsides to this method, but this is a good way to start getting your feet wet with doing some blueprinting and showing how you can use um, use it for your sounds. Because I know, like, if you touch it and you stay in the room, it does stay on. You know, it does flip flop because you're not actually exiting out. You could be a little bit more elegant with this, but as a baby's first flip flop, changing it in, it works pretty well. So next, let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's see, triggering sounds with keyboard input. So we did last week triggering sounds with just entering a, uh, you walk into your trigger box and it played something. And that's, you know, that works in some situations, but what if you wanted to kind of, kind of trigger sounds where if you're standing near something and you press a button, it works. Like you wouldn't want to be able to turn the radio on from over here, right? That wouldn't be very realistic. So that, you know, it's like, well, why can't you just press the button? The way that it's going to be set up in blueprint is if you're not, you know, you need to be in the trigger box. So, you know, the box could be kind of big for this, but you need to be in it in order for that, trigger to you know allow you to press a button like a key event and we are going to practice doing this with using that sound um, from um, this radio sound and um, I know the directions show it one way with like doing like a door sound if like if you go through it it, it plays it one way where it's um you know just to show you something different where you're playing sound at location where it's just playing a sound at basically the actor you know from the actor so this would be good that like if you're if you're trying to trigger like a door sound and you click the door and it makes a sound yeah it could play at the actor's head since that would make the most sense. But for something like this, you really wouldn't want it to um, sound, like if you trigger it and walk away, you don't want it to follow you. That wouldn't make much sense, would it? So, you know, the directions are good. It does show you just an, an, an alternate way that you can play sounds. But for this one though, we are going to actually kind of do it kind of similar to the way that we did it last week or last chapter with um, a sound place in the world. So first things first, let's drop in our radio cue. And let's set this up. Since it is a radio, it does make sense to make this attenuate and spatialized since it would sound like it's coming from a very specific spot. And we want to make sure that this is set up correctly. Um, we probably, you know, that probably would work with it. You just kind of, oh wait, no, wait, that's way too big. Let's, let's pull that back some. I didn't realize it was that far. Let's pull this back. We probably want to hear it in the whole building. Maybe a um, box would be better. be really loud here. A little bit smaller. So let's just do like a 500. Uh, 300. Yeah, it'll be super loud if you're standing right in next to it but we'll bring that fall off in. But we do want it to be the whole room. Let's see. Let's 
One of the downsides of these is I wish you could manually edit the shape of this volume. Maybe there is a way. I've never seen it where like you could go in on a, and like mess with the vertices of these boxes. That would be a lot nicer. Um, audio seems to get like the least amount of effort, you know, least amount of work put into it in game engines though. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that one. That's probably good enough. Uh, let's see. So we'd add that and we want to keep spatialization on. Next, let's add our box trigger so that it, we, this is going to be set up so that you have to be in this box trigger in order for you to be allowed to press the E button to play the radio. So let me just rename this real quick and call it like radio trigger. And it needs to be a lot bigger. You know, that would be a really hard box to be in, but we still want to be realistic with this. We don't want it to take up the whole room, but we want to make sure that we give it enough so that players don't get frustrated trying to trigger this. So let's do this. We want to make sure it's big enough too, or tall enough, I guess I should say. So if it's sinking into the floor, that's probably pretty good. Okay, that looks like a pretty good volume. So if we're standing here, we get a little bit wider. There we go. So we're only going to be able to trigger this radio if we're standing inside of this box. All right, we are ready to do the blueprint. So first things first, let me make sure that I have my references in here. So let me come down here to a new spot. I'm going to select my trigger box first. And we actually need two different references. We're going to um, turn context sensitive on, um, add event for radio trigger, collision. We're gonna want an on actor begin overlap. And different this time, we actually want an on actor end overlap because we want to be able to trigger it when we're in it but we want to not trigger it when we're not in it. So that's what we're going to use with this. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to get a reference to our sound from the level. So let's add a reference to radio two. So the new node that we're going to learn with this one is the gate node. So that you can kind of think of it like um, a castle gate, you know, hence the name gate. So we are going to first, well, let's, let's just make the note first. So um, we'll right click and type gate, but we'll probably have to turn context sensitive off. Oh, it's right there. Let me just make sure gate. Yes, yeah, the same one. So gate, it's like a, um, castle gate. Think about it like a, like a gate at the castle where you only want the sound, you know, we only want to go through the gate if certain conditions are met. And those conditions are, is the gate open? And it's only open if we're in that, we're overlapping that trigger. If we are not overlapping that trigger, we want the gate to close. When do we want to go through the gate? We want to go through the gate when we are pressing a key and we can make a key press node. Let's see if I can find it easy. Sometimes I have a hard time finding these. Let's see. So a key event. It's okay. Okay. I see it's called key event. E. Is it not popping up? Context sensitive. Oh, there we go. It's finding a little bit easier. And it looks like ABC. Right here. Here it is. Kind of weird. Key event E, content sensitive on. And it's this. It should look like this. So what 
what do we have that tells us it's time to go through the gate? And what that is, is when the E key is pressed. So if the gate is closed, no matter how many times we press E, we can't go through the gate. If it's open, if we press E, we can go through the gate. What happens if we go through that gate? And that's what this is. So if the gate's open, what happens afterwards? We want to play our sound. So let's see if I can find that. Play. Sound. Play. Our radio two. And again, this is a little bit different than what's in the in the um, document, but I don't want that radio sound to follow us. Sometimes you will want the radio sound to follow you, and that's why I did that in the document. But this one, you know, that doesn't make much sense. So let's compile and save. And let's test this out. Oh, I should keep that open, shouldn't I? We're going to test this out. So let me make this smaller again. And let's open that back up. Blueprints can be a lot of fun once you kind of get comfortable with them. You can do a lot with them. Okay, let's try this. Oops. Oop. What did I forget to do? Do you, do you know what I forgot to do? Why did that suddenly play when the level first stopped? It is because I forgot to, to um, set this to down here. If we scroll all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. I, I hate it so far down because it's such a, a useful thing. We have to turn auto activate off. We don't want it to play at the start of the level. And if you ever hear sounds like, oh no, that's not supposed to play yet, um, make sure you're turning auto activate off before, you know, when you when you drop them in. Okay, <laughs> let's try again. All right, so let's keep an eye on the blueprint as we approach this. So we get our on, we're overlapping now. We hit E. We get our sound. And it fades out as we walk away. If we stand over here, when we're no longer overlapping and we hit E, notice, you know, it's triggering that we are hitting E, but that gate is closed, so it's not working. Let's go in, go out. Can you see it in the blueprint, it working? So we go out, we get that orange line showing that we are no longer in there. But we can stand in here all day now and play our radio can't out here though. So that is a little bit with how to set up um, your triggers with a keyboard input. You can recycle those keyboard inputs too. Like we have this trigger here. Um, you don't want to have a different trigger button for each interactable. Usually in games you have the same button does everything. The same button unlocks doors. The same button triggers things in environments. You wouldn't want to add, you know, E for this one, D for this one, et cetera, et cetera. So having that on actor begin and end overlap is a way that you can kind of control what gets manipulated based on the location of the player. So that's it for the demo. So let me talk a little bit about this environment. So give me a moment to pull up Blackboard. And by class time, there will be a script for this um, on how to record this. But the important part is kind of reading over what's expected of you. So this one is called Details and Variation. I would first play through the whole level without sound and make notes about the sounds that you feel should be in the environment. And we want to make sure that we're getting enough variation and you're picking out everything you can find that should have noise. So. There is a lot going on with this environment. We have this interior space that needs a sound. We have exterior with rain. There's a lot of vegetation. There is a lot, you know, the stream is here. We have some trees. We have, you know, a lot of stuff around. There is even this, um, 
wood pile. In fact, let me walk over to it. I don't think it's playing right now, but um, that, that's right, you have to hook that up. That is in your blueprints, if you go to the level blueprints, you know, where I said, oh, there's a little bit in here. That's what this is. And um, you just need to have this trigger kind of similar, you know, you're gonna make a sound effect for that where it turns on when you hit the E button when you're close to it. This isn't that hard to figure out. So see if, you know, you're just kind of combining this with a blueprint, you, you know, the blueprint, a blueprint you're gonna already make. So this is here for you that it will actually trigger um, a particle for the fire, so it'll look pretty cool. Let's see what else. Oh yeah, I was going through the environment. Um, so, you know, the, the foliage is a little bit denser in some parts, you know, it's a little bit different. We walk through this corridor and we have more different trees, we have this pond, we have this waterfall. So there's a, you know, a lot going on here. A lot of it can be used in multiple spots, kind of like how I did the birds and the trees. Um, but you probably want some variation with that. You don't want just the same bird in every single tree, and that's your nature sounds. Um, you could put like crickets in areas, you could put frogs in areas, you can really vary this up. But again, we want it to sound natural. So don't, you know, don't overdo it, but don't make it so basic that it's boring. You know, if it's really boring, it's not going to give you that sense of this environment is alive. Let's see. Um, use the sound, uh, Adobe Audition Sound Effects Library again and clean up anything that you need. Keep a text file just like last week and you're going to have to submit that for me. Um, the only extra place that you can grab a sound is if you need music for the radio. Make sure that if you use music from an outside source, it's content appropriate for school and it's trimmed to the length of what you need for it. Please don't give me, I, 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 it's great if you give me your favorite song ever, but limit it to like three to five seconds. I really don't, you know, that's long enough for what we're working with. Make sure all your sounds are game ready. And this one, I'm not giving a minimum or maximum. You need to use your best judgment, but I'll tell you that, you know, if you try to do basic minimum like this, what I did for the demo, this is definitely not enough sounds to fill out this environment. So, you know, think about that as you're working with this. See room three. So in the room where you start, you have ambient sound for the room that makes sense for the surrounding. Create a triggerable sound for the radio on the table. If you stand near it, you should be able to press the E key and have it play a snippet of something. It should not play continuously. Use the setup demo this week to accomplish this. The radio should use a sound cue. The sound cue should first have a quick static noise followed by small snippets of music or some sort of announcement. So you're not limited to music but you know, something that would play over the radio. This should be random each time it is played. Make it sound like an actual radio. When you walk out of the room, use Blueprint to change the ambient sound from the interior to the exterior ambient. There's locate the pile of logs, that's what I showed you. Set up a Blueprint to trigger fire starting at, starting and playing a fire sound effect. This is already partially set up for you in the level blueprint. And that's what I showed you is that that blueprint, if it's hooked up to something, will trigger um, that particle. And this one, you do not, I guess you don't need to use the E key. It's just when you approach it, you know, you get kind of close, it triggers. Don't reuse the fire sound from the previous room. Create a better one now that you know how, and it should loop in the level. So it's going to need an initial like flare up sound and then it's gonna need a continuous sound. So think about how you would approach that. Fill out the exterior with good sounding ambient. You should make it sound as realistic as possible. Everything you see happening in the environment should have sound to it. This is going to require multiple sound cues and several placements. You should not be putting the same sound cue through the entire envir environment and calling it done. So I talked a little bit about that one already, yeah. This is kind of like a big, you know, we're, we're, we're really practicing laying out the ambient in here. And um, there will be the script attached to this for what you need to film. 
but I'm going to be, you know, ask for very specific things. So make sure that you do follow that just like always. And I think that's it for this one. So if you have any questions, you know, contact your instructor, but hopefully you have some fun adding sound to this environment.